Well, here I am with a set of late Redditch Royal Enfield bullet crankcases. And in the case of these, they're from a 350 engine, but the uh, 500 is very similar. And even the Indian Enfield engines don't differ by a huge degree, although I'll discuss some of that as we go along. But I thought, I don't think I've ever really discussed the lubrication system fully on them, and I thought that I'd give that a go at last. So I'm hoping that we've got good enough light for it. And I'll try and uh, go through things as I understand them and um, see if I can perhaps explain a little bit about how it all works. So I guess the first thing to do really is to discuss the oil and where it actually goes. Well, obviously it goes in through the filler cap there. And we have a dipstick. The high mark of which is up there, the low mark is there. Now that's still quite high, you know, there's still a lot of oil there after you go beyond the low mark. So um, I like to try and work somewhere between the two. If you've got an oil level between the high and the low, you're pretty good and that will do for me. Now we've got the oil in there, that's where it starts off. You can actually probably just see down there there's a drain hole when you change the oil. The oil comes out of there or other engines have the drain hole in slightly different places sometimes. But now I'll turn the engine casing around. Now then, we have got a little dipstick there. Hopefully we can see the marks on the dipstick showing whereabouts relating to the crankcase that the oil level actually is. So the low mark we can see is actually just above the outlet through to the oil feed pump. So even when the oil is on the low mark on the dipstick it is above the oil pump. So as long as we haven't let the oil run too low the oil pump will get oil regardless. If the oil pump, if the oil level drops lower than that, the nature of the crankcase means that as long as the oil pump is primed, it can still suck oil. And we can't really see in there, but usually there's a plug screws into there with a long gauze filter on it, and that basically filters the oil from the tank section of the crankcase before the oil pump sucks it in. So that gauze filter in there connects with this little opening here which goes leads to the oil pump in the timing cover which we can see hopefully there just below that screw hole. So that's where the oil gets drawn in by the oil pump. The oil feed pump lives to the rear of the timing cover and after it's drawn oil from the tank part of the crankcase it feeds it into this filter chamber here. So that fills up, the oil pump pumps the oil in, you can actually see there's a screw there that closes off a drilling uh, when, they, when they made the uh, timing cover and drilled out the oil passageways that is an oil passageway running along from the feed pump into the filter chamber. Now Redditch did a nice job of tapping a hole, tapping a thread in the hole and putting a little screw in there. On um, some Indian machines I've seen you just get a smear of like a sort of plastic metal substance that someone's squeezed in there and you get the odd thumbprint in it now and again but even that seems to work. But anyway, the oil pump picks up the oil from the tank part, fills this chamber up and then from the chamber the oil is fed into another little opening that leads from the filter. You can just see that little hole there at the bottom hopefully by the threads. Then that goes into the, uh, the quill bolt which forces oil right into the end of the crankshaft and feeds the big end and from there the crankcase 
The oil from gets flung from the big end around the flywheels and up to the piston and everywhere and lubricates all that lot and the main bearings and everything. And then after it's been there and done its work, the scavenge oil pump, which lives in the front of the timing cover, feed pumps to the rear, scavenge pump is to the front. Once the oil has been pumped through the big end and lubricated that and the flywheels and the piston and everything, it collects down the bottom there and you just see that hole in it. There's a the little chamber there. There's a hole. Now that is the pickup for the scavenge pump to take the return oil away. And that is one end of a hole that finishes up just in there. Now whether we can see that see the other end of that hole there just above those threads perhaps hopefully and then there's a similar plug in there with another gauze filter on it just to sort of keep any nasty particles out that might be there but really in an ideal world shouldn't be there to protect the um, scavenge oil pump as it sucks the oil up and then continues pushing the oil on its way, after it's sucked it, it then pushes it up here, up this passageway. Now this is an interesting one, in that Redditch and British engines have a relief valve there, whereas um, Indian ones don't. But basically, your scavenge oil it's pumped up there, your rocker oil, oil feed pipe fits there on both British and Indian engines and sends the scavenge oil up to the rocker gear, the rockers and the rocker blocks and everything. It oils them and the valves and then runs down the pushrod tunnels and into the timing chest. But the British engines also have a relief valve there, so if there's too much oil being scavenged or the oil is too thick or too cold or whatever and you can get quite a lot of pressure building up rather than harming the oil pumps or the drive gears that operate them the relief valve will lift and dump oil you can't actually see it but it dumps the oil into a little passageway there where the cam followers live and if you like it sort of short circuits all the rocker feed and sends the oil straight into the timing chest where it's collected, in the case of British engines, by the two idler gears between the uh, camshafts and the magneto or distributor drive gear, whichever, but there's two gears there, the idlers, which a lot of people think do nothing, but on British bikes, they force the oil that they pick up in the timing chest here, they force it back through that hole there and actually pump it through there. And these faces are actually machined to help make those gears act like pump gears. Now, the Indian engines don't have them. They just have a big hole drilled there for the oil to run back through. But the other end of that hole there that the British engines have actually connects. You can just actually see this. You won't be able to see the shape in a casing there. There's a drilling through that little raised portion and it goes along and when we take the filler cap off you may possibly be able to see there's a hole in there let's have a look on the other side of the crankcase it's right adjacent it's at the end of this raised portion here this one there's a hole there right at the end of it just under the filler cap neck. So when you've got the engine running and you take your dipstick out of a Redditch engine, you can actually look for oil return there. You see it uh, spurting back there, while on an Indian engine it's less easy to see because it just sort of overflows through a larger hole in this area, just runs back rather than actually gets pumped back. So there's another difference there. Um, Anyway, back to this rocker feed and relief valve system. Once the oil's either been to the rockers or bypassed through the relief valve back into the timing chest, it oils the camshafts and the uh, cam followers and everything. And then, as I say, 
it's either pumped back through that hole on the British engines or just sort of reaches a certain level in the Indian engines and returns to the tank. So um, the scavenge pump doesn't pump anything directly back to the tank. It pumps it all to the rockers in the case of the uh, Indian engines and probably most of it to the rockers in the case of the British engines but any excess pressure or oil does have a chance to be bypassed straight back to the timing chest and uh, relieve some of the stresses on the oil pump drive trains. So that's how that all works. Also worth having a look here you can see on the British engines you've got just a little channel there that just allows any pressure differential between the oil tank compartments and the crankcase to generally sort of equalise. It's only a small passageway though, it's not the main breather. Um, the main breather is in the drive side crankcase of course. And that's the inside of it there, see those two holes? That's the uh, outlet. I'll turn the case over. And that's the flange that the breather body fits on and you have an outlet pipe from it. Sometimes you have those what they call duck bill pipes. There's, there's various different means and some people fit one way valves, I do. Um, other people just leave it open. Some early ones actually had some metal discs in there that sort of rattled about and were supposed to sort of create a one way valve, but I don't think they work too well. Anyway, that is the main breather for the crankcase there. So that really, is all we've got on the drive side case to discuss is the location of that breather so that's that one out the way we'll just have a look at this timing case again and like I said the feed pump that picks up the oil from the oil tank part the crankcase lives in the rear of the timing compartment there timing cover while the scavenge pump is the one in the front with the filter assembly underneath it. And when I'm changing the oil in these engines, I actually like to take the timing cover off and tip it up this way. And when I've changed the filter, I like to pour oil into the chamber because there's a fair bit of oil lives in there. And the oil pump's probably got to go some to uh, shift that amount of oil. So if that's full already, that's a big help when you start an engine that's had a full oil change and might be a bit dry. But as for being a bit dry, another thing I like to do is have the quill bolt removed and I get an oil pump, an oil can that's got a pump in it, you know, the type with the lever that you pump. And I like to put the end of the can's pipe into the uh, end of the crank. Uh, there's usually a little cork or rubber seal in there and just pump about 20 pumps of oil in there to prime the big end and get a little bit of oil into the crankcase to sort of kick things off. And um, also, once the timing cover's refitted, I like to um, have this inspection cover removed here and put maybe a quarter of a pint or so of oil into there to go down into the timing chest, into the cams and everything, again, to get things to kick off in there. But um, after an oil change, if we start off with the uh, oil on the dipstick showing between the low and the high marks, and also prime the big end like I just said and put a bit of oil in the timing chest like I just said. You can generally start the engine up and run it for a few minutes and stop it and then you'll get a true indication of what the oil level is and um, you can top it up as and if required. But like I said, I like to try and keep the oil between the two marks if I can. So that really is pretty much how the lubrication system works on uh, both types of engine. British and Indian, but like I said, the, um, although the uh, feed sides of British and Indian Enfield Bullet lubrication systems are pretty much the same, the scavenge side of things differs a little bit in the ways I've described with and without the um, relief and bypass valve there for the uh, oil being returned. So, and that's worth bearing in mind when high capacity oil pumps are used with a plain big end. Now a roller big end won't build up much uh, resistance or pressure so you can have a larger oversized oil pump feeding the oil in through the big end and that's not a great problem with a roller big end. But if you've got a plain big end 
you can get immense pressure building up there so it's always worth letting the engine warm up carefully don't rev it too hard until it gets a bit warmed up and uh, that will put less strain on the oil pumps and likewise to a degree the scavenge pumps especially on the Indian engines where there's no um, relief or bypass valve if they're trying to force all their scavenge oil cold straight through the rockers and um, perhaps there isn't a hell of a lot of clearance there to allow the full intended flow through that can put um, a lot of pressure on the drives to the oil pumps as well because some people seem to believe that the springs between the oil pump bodies and the caps that fit over them are to allow the oil pumps to lift to relief, relieve the oil pressure and give them an easier time but they're not they are there to keep the faces the moving faces of the oil pumps against the faces they register on in the timing cover and it's not they're not there to allow those oil pumps to lift like some people mistakenly believe so uh, the best thing is is to just go easy on an engine with a plain big end that's got uh, high capacity oil pumps in it and then uh, everything should be fine and uh, if you've got a roller big end and you've got a relief valve on the return scavenge side then they're much less of a worry but that basically in a nutshell is how the lubrication system works one other tiny point worth mentioning some filler caps come dipsticks have little pinhole breathers in them like this one's got but not all of them do so that's just something worth bearing in mind as well I like to have a filler cap with a pinhole breather in it and it just gives me that peace of mind that uh, the oil tank can actually breathe a little bit more easily and is less likely to build up all sorts of pressure inside it for whatever reason there might be but um, that's pretty much it that's how the Royal Enfield bullet lubrication system works as far as I know other opinions are probably available.